Hi everybody, I've got a little model engine here I wanted to show you. This is a model of what I guess might be a steam engine. I'm not sure if it's a model of a, an actual steam engine that somebody might have used for real one day, or if it's just a design that everybody likes to make because it's so simple. And when I say everybody likes to make these, what I mean is on the internet you'll find lots and lots of examples, both on the web and on YouTube. Uh, this one is a little bit different than all the others that I've seen because it's made out of plastic instead of metal. Lots of guys make them out of pretty shiny aluminum and brass. This one happens to be made out of recycled high-density polyethylene, which is the plastic that you see that has a number two on the, in the little triangle to indicate what kind of plastic it is. So milk jugs and five-gallon plastic buckets and the lids for the buckets and lots of other things are made out of this plastic. And as you can see by all the multicolors here, I've melted down quite a few different objects and remolded them back into different blocks to uh, machine into this little engine. So before we try and run it, I thought I'd take it apart just a little bit and show you how it works. Um, this is obviously a flywheel. It's got a little crank here and a little pin here that engages a piston rod. There's a piston in this cylinder. I can show you if I take it apart here. There's the piston. There's the cylinder. And to understand how it works, you kind of need to see this side of the cylinder here. And notice particularly that hole. That's where the air goes in and that's where the air comes out when it's being run. Or if, if you ran this on steam, that would be steam, not air. That hole uh, lines up with these two holes here where the air comes in one of them, goes out the other. And if you notice when I had that put back together, as the crank turns, this rocks back and forth like that so that this hole alternately lines up with that hole and that hole. And so the way it works is when the piston is all the way in like that and the cylinder is oriented like that, the air is coming in that top hole under pressure from a compressor or whatever, goes in here and pushes the piston out. Then as that happens the crank over here turns like that, twists the cylinder back the other way, and on the return stroke, when it's just when everything's moving by inertia of the flywheel, the air goes out the other hole, and on the other side there's just nothing there. This is a little tube where the air comes in, and this is just a, a hole that's the other other end of this hole where the air can come out. So that happens over and over and over and over and over again, and the thing will run, as you can see in just a minute. Over here on the other side, I need to put it back together just a little bit now. Um, this is the other end of that rod on, on which the cylinder pivots. And I've got a little washer here, and a little spring here, and a little nut here, and that holds it all together with a variable amount of pressure of the cylinder against this vertical piece of plastic here. So if you have it really, really tight, of course it would be all bound up and wouldn't turn very well. If you have it too loose, then there's not a very good seal between this piece and the cylinder, and so the air leaks out there. So that's why I made this adjustable with the little spring and all that stuff. As it turns out, it doesn't seem very critical once you get it kind of about like that, it seems to run just fine. So, let's haul it over to the air compressor and hook up the air here and watch it run. Yeah, anytime. Is it going? 